make stuff to make stuff? Yeah, to like make others. And then it spins me. No, what are those beauty hacks? It's just like, hey, use toothpaste on your eyebrows. Are they seem to just be like using something that's not supposed to be used for that, and there already is a better product for it, but now you're using it for something different, so it's a hack. Yeah. Hacks are stupid. They're all the worst. Do you see like a list? It's like 25 BuzzFeed hacks for making your, your life lettuce easier. dry better. And it's like, why not buy a nuclear submarine and use that? And like, that's <laughs> harder than just drying my fucking lettuce. You can just get a paper towel and pat it dry. Yeah. You don't need a hack. And it's like, well, what if you take a bottle of bleach, cut it open, put it upside down, and then you bolt it to your wall and you store your lettuce in there? Like, why would I do that? That's the worst. Then you're going to have bottles of bleach stapled to your walls full of lettuce? <laughs> Hacks are the worst. <laughs> well, we're doing an IKEA hack to build our shelf. That's an IKEA hack. That's not like a, it's just using something to build something. Else. It's going to be a shelf, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a shelf. Yeah, but they're meant to sit on the floor and we're putting them on a bench. That's not like... <laughs> That's a hack. <laughs> no. So so if I sit on the ground instead of sitting on a couch, I'm like, I hacked the couch. <laughs> yeah. No, they, all those No, I think you hacked your butt. <laughs> no, don't hack my butt. It's a butt hack. No, don't say butt hack. I don't like that. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to an episode of I Love This, You Should Too, and happy 2020. Happy 2020. Is that how we were going to say it, not 2020? 2020. It makes more sense. I tried to work that into one of my cheers, but it's really hard. 2020? 2020, yeah. Because it sounds cool, right? Yeah, that shouldn't be that hard to work it into a cheer. It was pretty hard. What rhymes with 20? 30. <laughs> 2020, we can see all you rest smell like pee. <laughs> nope, I'm not using that one either. Indy's very good at coming up with offensive cheers. <laughs> that wasn't that offensive. Offensive cheers that I could never actually use. Our vision's 2020. You need support from the government. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're not drinking a beer because I have to go do some actual cheerleading this evening. Oh yeah, so, so here's, here's my hack for all you people. <laughs> You want to have some milk tea at home? I love milk tea. I spent a lot of time in like Taiwan and uh, I love that delicious, delicious milk tea. So what I do is you get some Tetley vanilla Earl Grey, you get some honey, you use some milk, brew it up and you can put it in the fridge and have milk tea all the time. But we're having some hot milk tea. Right hot now. milk tea. So we're having vanilla Earl Grey with honey and milk and it's delightful. So you're going to hear a lot of this. Mmm, that's good pasta. Oh, <laughs> I like how I did it and it was fine. And then I heard you do it. I did not like it. Okay. Well, speaking of doing some actual cheerleading, today we're talking about Bring It On, In It to Win It. Yeah, we're talking about the fourth? The fourth movie in the Bring It On franchise. Yeah. If you uh, missed out on the previous three, I think it's all right because they don't have anything to do with each other. You can listen to the pre-episode where I did like a one minute rundown of both number two and number three. And you can listen to our third and fourth episodes for talk about the original Bring It On. Yes, the diamond in the crown of the Bring It On franchise. Is that like a nice way of saying the one good one? No, it's the best one. All right, maybe we should actually talk about what we're going to do. So you claimed to love this movie. You claimed to love two and three as well. And mm-hmm. then as soon as I asked you about them, you're like, yeah, maybe not. So number four, bring it over here. I'm on top of it. What's it called? <laughs> bring it's it on. Going with that. Bring, bring it, it on, on. Let's get going. <laughs> bring it on. In it to win it. In it to win it. I like let's get going. <laughs> I'm on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we've had a lot of Christmas in the last week, and I think we're a little off our game right now. But <laughs> yeah, we're recording this early, so we've had just like eight days of Christmas dinners. And we spent all yesterday eating both duck and goose. <laughs> And now we are going to be full forever. Yep, full forever. Full forever. Even though I managed to eat a lot of food today <laughs> for someone who's going to be full, full forever. forever. The Samantha He's story. So you claimed you loved this movie once upon a time. Did it hold up? Do you love it? I. Oh, look at that pause. <laughs> I like it. I love parts of it. <laughs> and I will tell you why in our discussion. All right. Well. Uh... <laughs> A resounding endorsement. <laughs> Indy, I loved parts of it. 
Andy, did you love this movie? No, I didn't love it. Neither you don't even would, love no. it. Um, like you, there's parts of it actually pretty funny. Let's just get this said right off the beginning. This is a bad movie. It's not a good movie. We can start our discussion there. Okay. This is bad. But there's a lot of good stuff in it. Should we start with the stuff that I liked about it? Let's. Okay, so first I think we should start out talking about how this movie is like the first, second, and third movies. So it, there's a, definitely a format. Um, the movie starts with a dream sequence. So it's got a bunch of fun things in it, like a dance sequence, and there's a romance, and there's um, like cheerleading problems um and cheerleading problems cheerleading problems can you tell me about a few cheerleading problems <laughs> yes uh so like in real life this is one of the things that i really appreciate about the movie is that there are like tensions on the team and then there are tensions with another team and those are things that you would find in real life in cheerleading Oh, and in the world. And in the world. People have issues with other people sometimes. Yes. Right, right. So It does take place in this world. That's true. <laughs> there are human emotions. Yes, human throughout emotions the movie. happen. Mm-hmm. And tensions are um, overcome and like things turn out all right in the end. Yeah, that's, I think, on the poster. It's, bring it on for, we got the beat. And then their slogan is, human emotions happen. <laughs> I want to see you mock up that poster. (laughs) So the thing that I really, really liked about this movie was that the stunting that was represented in it was actual real stunts that a team at that level would do. So that's one thing I was wondering about because there is a lot of actual cheering in this movie. Yeah, It's not just kind of adjacent to the plot. It's in there frequently and it's, I think, for its benefit. And to me... It looks very good. Mm -hmm. I don't really know cheerleading. So a lot of the times I know if I watch a a hockey movie or a basketball movie, I'll be like, those people can't even play. Exactly. But in this, (laughs) they all looked very good to me. So you'd say it's quite good as well. Yeah. um, Like in the first Bring It On movie, uh, they did a lot of really basic things that look good. Um, So the difficulty, the degree of difficulty wasn't really there um, for the level that they were supposed to be competing at. Whereas with um, In It to Win It, uh, you're doing stunts that are actually difficult and they're showing them kind of learning how to do the stunts and working through the process that you'd actually work through to learn these stunts. And then in the end, they're doing stunts that are level appropriate and look really good as well. Which is why in this 60-person cast, only four of them actually talk because <laughs> those are the ones that are actors and the rest because are Because they have some all-star team in the background, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I really appreciated that part and clearly you did too, because you thought it was impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think there's a really good message in this movie about teamwork. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about that. Um, I think the, um, huge setback that they get, should we spoil it? I think this, this episode is a spoiler for the, what, 2007 fourth Bring It On movie. (laughs) Yes. So for those of you, I know I know a lot of people are been trying to avoid spoilers for Bring It On and It to Win It, but we're going to have to spoil it for you if okay. you haven't seen it. So there is a super fun scene where they have a cheer rumble and half the team on each team gets hurt. And so then they have to form together to make a new team to compete and ultimately win the cheer camp championships. It's a totally normal, real-life thing that would happen. Yeah, so then they come together, and there's this scene, which we'll get into, where they have this completely unwarranted confessional, and you'd think that that's what would make them come together, but they don't. They still hate each other, but then they say, you know what, let's do some, like, jiving and waltzing together, and then they do that, and then that shows them to be a team. And then... I think it shows them that they can, like, have fun with people who are from another team, and but they, in the previous day, they had all like broken down all these barriers and told their darkest secrets. Why wouldn't that be the thing that brings them together? They just needed another thing. It, this movie is full of that of like, this would make sense. But then they do something else which makes less sense. And you're like, <laughs> OK, I guess. So, yeah, then they come together and they get their second chance, not because they have all their great teamwork, because of, but because of spite. Like, the boss lady says, well, I want to beat those people, so I guess, yeah, fine, you can come in now. 
because I'm angry at my ex-husband. Yeah, that was a, kind of a weird storyline to make everything happen. But um, what did you think of the references to West Side Story? I wish someone died at the end, just like in West Side Story. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be a movie for kids, so... It's, yeah, it's just straight on the surface. One team's the Sharks, one team's the Jets. They don't like each other. And then there's someone falls in love with the other one. So it's as much West Side Story as West Side Story is Romeo and Juliet. It's... I liked that they took this kind of literary theme and used it in a movie that, like, had cheerleading in it. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, but it's not like that was really central or that they were pulling a lot directly from the movie it just happens to be that if the teams were the cougars and the wildcats then we wouldn't have any west side story themes really there's the rumble and the names that's really it it's just two teams that don't like each other which could be anything yes and i agree i just think it's neat that they used this like this thing to do yeah, it. so there's the west coast sharks yeah. and the east coast jets yes so do does each coast of a country just get one cheer team? No, I feel like this is like them trying to name the gym that they go to. I really enjoyed the parts that um, had like references to cheer camp and like competition and stuff like that because they, they like bring back nice memories for me having gone to competitions and to cheer camp and stuff. And I think that if you're a cheerleader, you'd enjoy that. Um so is there appeal to this movie outside of, hey, I know that? I don't know. This might be very much for cheerleaders. Well, definitely. Yeah. And I think that if you don't really know the world of cheerleading, you might not get some of the stuff that they're talking about. I think you'd get it. It's But it's just to what end then? You're just like, yes, this is included because that's the life they live. But having that included doesn't instantly make me happy. It's right. not like, hey, I remember that from when I was a kid. It's just, yep, yeah, this is a thing these characters are doing. And it doesn't have a built-in kind of cachet that way. Right. So seeing all the things that they did at cheer camp, do you think you'd enjoy cheer camp, Indy? Their cheer camp? Fuck yeah. <laughs> There's no work. No. So in your cheer camp, don't you have some sort of adult telling you what to do at some point? Yes. They were just running wild through Universal Studios, and they can do everything on their own. Maybe they'll just start practicing right next to the roller coasters. They can go out at night. They do whatever they want. So yeah, that seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the scene where they were going through all of the the like seminars and courses, like the facials course and the dancing course. There were seminars and courses? Yeah. Remember, there was like a montage. Oh, no, I do not remember. I don't remember them, like, learning anything. Oh, yeah, they had, like, a whole day of going around, and you meet that really intense dance instructor, and she's trying to make everyone... Her name is Chicago. Chicago. (laughs) She's from the streets. Yeah. And then um, there was, like, stunting, and the Pepper, the owner of Camp Spirit Thunder, was giving like a, a seminar on facials and how to like look happy and i remember there was showmanship 10 seconds of them talking about that but how long are they there in this movie two weeks they're there for two weeks or a week they go to maybe three courses yeah yeah that sounds like a pretty good trip yeah it does sound pretty good and then the rest of the time they're just like fighting in the streets or doing whatever they want having stunt competitions in the streets yeah and swimming is that what hockey camp is like more dancing more dancing oh Mm -hmm. interesting less use of the word cheer as a prefix though cheerific cheertastrophe cheertacular cheertacular Interchair racial relationship? Yes. Should we just talk about some of the stupid lines? That <laughs> yes, said? let's stupid talk. Slash great lines. Yeah, okay. I wrote down a few of them here. The word panty dropper is said a few times. Ugh, yeah, that, yeah, there were some cringy things that definitely I could have done without. Um, I don't want an interchair racial relationship. <laughs> and then at one point she talks to the only black girl who has lines and she says, True dat, sister yo. Remember that one? That was a yeah, good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, the phrase, pop the chubber. Ew. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, you was right. <laughs> uh, cheer cest. Yeah. Olymp bitch. Olymp bitch? Yeah, they're talking about the Olympics and how she's a bitch. So oh, they said, okay. Olymp bitch. 
Yeah. She has an Olympic gold medal, I think. Oh, yes, because she's a bitch. Oh, now I get it. Because she went to the Olympics for being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and to say that they don't like something, she goes, boo that, freak. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to bring that one back. Back? That wasn't a thing. <laughs> The writing in this, oh, it's real rough. It sounds like an adult trying to write for a child yes, without that's ever exactly having what it is. met a child. It's like, hello, fellow children. Boo that freak, <laughs> right? Huh? You guys get it. Chubber? Millennial? Although this is 2007. Oh, yeah, and you can tell. I never thought, like, because we're in 2020 we're right in 2020 now. We're in 2020 right now. You think, like, oh, 2007 doesn't really have a sound or a look to it. And then you watch this movie and you're like, yep, that's 2007. All the flip phones in this? Yeah. That had the music. Oh. Oh. This seems so far removed from my life that it seems further away. Than... It's like older. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have a flip phone? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Did you have more than one? Not at the same time. I wasn't a drug dealer or anything. <laughs> I mean, did you get a flip phone and then upgrade to a new flip phone? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. I think I had two or three in a row. They didn't do all the things that the flip phones in this movie did, like broadcast a video. Yeah, and you can just send it to someone right away. Yeah. This live broadcast video on your flip phone. Yeah. There's this movie with, uh, I think it's with Captain America in it, called Cellular, and he's just on a flip phone this whole time, but he's broadcasting Is he all playing sorts of video. Captain America? No, he's. I just forget that actor's name. <laughs> Captain America. Chris Evans? Chris Evans. Okay, yeah. He's just Captain America. Cellular. It's a terrible movie. And then the terrible cell phones movie. kill you? No. Like, Kim Basinger or someone like her is trapped in an attic, and she can only call Captain America. And then, at one point, his call gets <gasps> dropped and gets picked up by somebody else. So then he grabs that phone and talks to her. Oh, my God, yes. Okay, I remember you watching this. I think I saw the last, like, 20 minutes of it. <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. And it was for How Did This Get Made, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I remember this phone. This phone. I remember this movie about phones. Okay, back to this movie about cheerleading and a few other things. <laughs> How does it stack up to the first Bring It On to you? Uh, the first Bring It On is like a 100, mm-hmm. and this one is like maybe a 70. 70? Yeah. That's gracious. That's gracious? That's very, oh, I liked very it. generous. I had fun while I was watching it. Yeah, I'll agree. There are fun parts, but the parts that are not fun are hard to get through. Yeah, there was a couple of things. It felt a little long. Yes, I said, how much longer is in this? And we'd been watching for 40 minutes at that point. (laughs) Yeah. And it's only, it's under 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there were parts of it that seemed to drag a little bit. But I don't think you could cut much more out of this movie. Oh, you could. And still have it be like a feature length film. That's true. Not just an episode of a show. It was, it's pretty disappointing because I knew it wasn't going to be like the first one. Yeah. The first one I ended up being quite surprised with and I thought it was uh, really clever and satirical. Mm -hmm. And this, that one was on its way to being like election and mean girls and had like some really scathing bite to it. Yes. This is is not that. It doesn't try to be that. So it's not like it was trying that and failing. Although at some points it does. We'll get into the big confessional thing later, Mm -hmm. which was ridiculous. But the sequels, everyone's a caricature. Yes. And they're kind of leaning into that, especially Mm -hmm. in this one. But in Bring It On, all those people were characters. Even though they're fitting a definite stereotype, those are much more fully fleshed out characters. Yes. And this, nobody has any depth to them. It's just so... They say who their character is, and then that's what they do, and they just kind of go through that. So technically, the characters from the first Bring It On and from this Bring It On are supposed to be the same age. Yeah, there are some 30-year-old high school students in this movie. That's right. <laughs> you pointed them out multiple times. Because there's so many of them. All the ones who don't talk, even the ones who do talk, are are older than they should be. But those background actors who are the like the professionals. Yes, yeah. Especially the men are I considerably have a, older. I have a feeling those were um, like a college team or something that they hired to be like the background cheerleaders because mm-hmm. um, that's often what they'll do is they'll get um, like people over 18 because they can hire them and work them harder. I don't know what film roles are, but <laughs> I'm assuming that you can work easier with an adult than you can with a child definitely yeah so no child labor laws yeah if you get under 18 cheerleaders that look like they're under 18 it's going to be harder to shoot your movie 
But do they necessarily have to make sure they look 35? <laughs> there were some really old looking guys on there um, who were clearly not in high school. I know when I was started watching this, at first I tried to keep track of the ridiculous lines. Like, I can't believe someone wrote this and then someone else had to say it. And I was writing them down, and then I stopped about 90 seconds into the movie because I couldn't keep up. It's a really fast-paced movie, um, kind of like Bring It On, like the first one. I think uh, that one was really fast. It's a lot of lines, like, back and forth and really quick, whereas this one is also kind of the same. That one tended to have lines that made sense, though. (laughs) Yeah, true. This one, in addition to having really ridiculous dialogue, there was often a reaction that didn't fit the thing that was said earlier Mm -hmm. and not just in the sense of like oh they overreacted it seems like they cut out lines in the middle and someone was reacting to something very different it is uh bizarre something that they cut out yeah that would make sense it's like joss whedon you know how when he's funny he's a funny guy he's a funny writer when he's trying to be serious, he is hilarious. It's just not <laughs> not his thing. It, yeah, this movie tries to do some serious things and tries to do some character development. And that's the time that it's really hard to watch. And not just like, oh, that's not well done. It's, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> the main conflict of this movie is, of course, a love story between two rival cheer teams. How did that work for you? So you have Penn. Yeah. Is that a name? Penn. Is that his name? Yes, I think so. Is that a name? No. And Carson, Penn and Carson, who sound like a 1940s stand-up duo. Yeah. Penn and Carson. (laughs) Or like a a late-night television duo. Oh, Penn and Carson. Yeah, I'd watch that show. It's the Penn and Carson show, late night. (laughs) How do they fall in love? Um, She sees his abs while he's running. That's it. That is exactly how. (laughs) They don't do anything. They don't have any sort of conversation, but they're like, no, well, I guess we're in love now. Later on in the movie, they go out and have like a getting to know you montage and they have a great night together. Why would they not put that in for the meeting? True. Why would you not meet, show them having a great time, and then they're torn because they're on the other team and then she thinks, oh, maybe he's trying to sabotage me and he's a spy. Have them get to know each other because at the beginning... They talk for 45 seconds, like, oh, hey, you're cute. Yeah, okay, you are too. She gets run over by a stroller. That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. (laughs) They're both doing stuff they shouldn't be doing in an amusement park. She's, like, stunting, and he's jogging shirtless. Yeah. That's not a place to do it. (laughs) So I guess they have that in common. But then throughout the movie, after that, they're like, you were just trying to trick me. How? He didn't even say anything. They just bumped into each other. Yeah, and they didn't... How is that falling in love? Maybe he just runs shirtless in public all the time. Well, he clearly does. Yeah. But why wouldn't they put that montage of them having a great time together? Have it right there. Then they fall in love, and then there's the conflict. You can't have the conflict of them falling in love without them falling in love. It's just a lot of weird choices in this movie. It's like out of order? Yes. Yeah. Um, I liked the dance uh, sequence where they sneak out of her room and she they ride the roller coaster together and then they go to this dance and yeah that would have been a great first name yeah and then they fall in love and live happily ever after yeah but wait they're on opposing teams what's Penn's accent i don't know yeah exactly now that i'm thinking about it i actually don't know um he speaks to his dad in spanish though Mm -hmm. so i'm assuming it's supposed to be kind of hispanic no 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 No, no, I don't think that's it. I don't know. It's some sort of American accent, but it's uh, it's just like, I'm a cool kid from the streets. Yo. Yo. Boo that mess, yo. For shizzle, which is also something that is said in this movie. So what did you think of the casting choices for those two? He is fine to annoying. She is fine to boring. Yeah, she could have been a little more interesting. This movie focuses mainly on three characters. Carson, Penn, and who's the mean girl? Brooke. Brooke. And they are the three most boring characters of the whole movie, too. There are some side characters that are legitimately funny, and that's when the movie shines, because it gets into silly stuff, and it's always about those side characters. Who who are your favorite side characters? Ruben! Ruben! Ruben's fucking gold! (laughs) So Ruben is this character who we assume is gay and says he's gay, 
and is just like having a lot of fun not just the character but the actor is having a lot of fun just being ridiculous Mm -hmm. and he's great uh that goth girl what's her name ashley sure let's say ashley she's funny too sarah she... sorry it's sarah sarah has some good bits she wears vampire teeth all the time she's like i'm goth <sighs> so that was fun who's the one black girl who's a caricature aisha aisha of course her name's aisha she was not fun and it physically hurt my stomach to see her on screen because there's some actress <laughs> oh, yeah. who this is like her big break and this is what she has to say and it is fucking brutal. It is brutal. I agree. I think um, there were some choices just for her character that should have been cut. The character should have been cut. The character should have been cut. Yeah. This is like stereotyping black people to the max and then coming back and doing it again. Yeah. it's. Well, I guess we should get into that. So there's a lot of characters who are, like I said, caricatures. But then in one big group confessional scene, they all say, like, you know what? This is the real me. And they all say that they've just been putting on this persona for some inexplicable reason. Yeah. So Aisha says something like, you know what? I'm not no hood rat. I just, I'm actually a black woman who enunciates. No, but she doesn't even change her voice. She talks exactly the same. She talks exactly the same. She She just just threatens people less. And she doesn't, like, throw in some of the lingo she was using. Yeah. And she said, actually, I'm an Oreo. I'm black on the outside, white on the inside. So I I can't even break this down. So she's been like an incredibly offensive stereotype this whole time. Yes. But then the movie kind of says like, oh, but she was playing that up. So it's okay, right? But then isn't that just as bad or at least bad in a different way that this is what everyone thinks even the characters in this movie, even the black characters, they're yes. like, yeah, this is what black people are like. If I'm not like this, I'm white. And the goth girl says, hey, you're whiter than me. Yeah. Because she stops threatening to cut people like government cheese, which is a line <laughs> that's said in this in movie. This movie. Okay. I will cut you like government cheese. That's something that happens in this movie. Um, Speaking of government cheese, Chelsea, the character Chelsea... Is she the dumb one? She's the dumb one. She's funny. She is funny. Some of the stuff that she says and comes up with. She has some really good lines, actually. Like the main character's lines maybe weren't funny, but anything that she says after makes you think that their line was funny. Yes. Because it's like a funny situation, but it's really only her making it funny. Yeah. I did not like some of the innuendos that she said. Like? Oh, I can't think of one off the top of my head now, but there were a couple of things that were just a little bit like, eh, I feel like a high school child is not going to know about that. About government cheese? Not about government cheese. Oh. She made some like sexual kind of innuendos and um, in her cheers, she was talking about having it twice as long or something and like, mm-hmm. it was just that, that was cringy. Yeah. Those side characters though could be a lot of fun. Some of them. Yes. And then also Ruben reveals like, hey, actually, I'm not gay. I just pretended to be gay so I could watch you all change. He could be charged with like sex is crimes. Not cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really weird. But then they forgive him pretty quickly. Yeah. He was such a fun character, too. So then it makes me like him less because I loved that character. Yeah. And now it turns out it was just a big scam so he could watch women get Naked. dressed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was a little gross. Um. And by a little gross, I mean a lot gross. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked his character originally. um, And I think if they had stuck with that, it would have been all good. And then one of the other confessions is the the stupid girl says, I'm a virgin. And the guy that's with her goes, gross. And they're all (laughs) like, oh, sick. That's the confession. And that's the reaction. She gets more of a like a grossed out reaction than the guy who says, I pretend to be gay to watch women get naked. Eh, that seems weird too. But... I'm a voyeur. Yes. But she's a virgin and that's gross. Bro. Also, in high school, were people that focused on like who's still a virgin? Because there's another part in the in the hotel room when they're setting up the spirit stick and like their little altar thing so that it's safe and the cheer gods are happy. And they are like, oh, we need the blood of a virgin. And everyone just looks at Carson. And it's like, none of you are virgins. Anyone else? It's just her. Yeah. You're all like 17. Yeah, or 16. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense that you're all like, oh, there's only one left. 
And I feel like we shouldn't be putting that in a movie for children. Yeah, oh, that's just such a high school movie thing, is everyone's, like, really obsessed with, oh, she's a virgin. Yeah. And that's the worst thing. But I don't remember it being such a thing in no, high school. No, me neither. Me neither. I, like, maybe with, like, amongst my friends, like, the three of us. But it's not like everyone in high school was keeping tabs on, like, who was a virgin and who wasn't. It's funny how everyone who writes movies probably went to high school. None of them seemed to know what it was like. No, they're like, I think this is what high school is like. I think it's because when you are 16, everything feels crazy, life and death. It feels like every teacher is out to get you. It feels like everyone's really concerned with your sexuality. In reality, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. But it feels like that to you. So maybe that's how people remember it. And then that's how it comes out. In yeah. Movies. And Ruben, my favorite character, has hair that's black on one side and blonde on the other. Yeah. Do you notice how often it's switched? No. The black would switch sides. Would it? Quite a few times. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, now I'm going to have to go back and like just like f- fast forward through the movie and see how many times the hair switches. Also, if you're watching it at home, fast forwarding through, it's probably a good way to go. Mm. Anytime someone starts talking, just fast forward. <laughs> Unless it's a side mm. character, because that's probably funny. Um. So the film's other big kind of controversy is that Penn's dad is an army general and won't let him cheer. Or I guess what happened was he never actually asked him to go to cheer camp. He said he was going to extreme warrior, fancy martial arts training camp. Because he does carry his own nunchucks with him. Yes, he brought nunchucks. Like, how did you fly there with nunchucks? Why did you fly there with nunchucks? What did you think was going to happen that you would need nunchucks? First of all, you never need nunchucks. Even if you are going into a to specifically to fight someone, you don't need nunchucks. There are way better weapons. No, they're for a show. They're not actually useful. But he like shows you in the end when he's packing to leave that he knows how to do it. Yeah, I'm doing a nunchuck arm motion right now. Are you? It looks like you just have <laughs> a small child in a headlock. <laughs> no, I'm like twisting it around and twisting it around. Now you look like you're jumping rope. <laughs> But either way, yeah, he has nunchucks and does some tricks for no reason. For no reason. And then he packs them and then he's sad. Um, but I like that he called his dad and told him about cheer. That was nice. It was a nice family moment. And maybe he will explain to his dad that he was a cheerleader at heart and that that's his passion forever. That end. So I liked the spirit stick that came back. And so you already knew a little bit about the spirit stick from the first movie. Oh, I'm a big spirit stick pro now. Oh, yeah. You know all the things. Mm-hmm. I have that spirit stick book. Uh, Dummy's got to spirit sticks. <laughs> I got it at Spirit Sticks R Us. Right. You know, I'm the big um, spirit stick complex. Oh, yeah. Down in the spirit stick district of town. <laughs> spirit district. No, yes. that's different. That's where all the ghosts are. You don't want to go there. Stay away from the spirit district. <gasps> that's why I couldn't find it when I went down there. Yeah, it comes and goes. But anyway... Spirit sticks. Spirit sticks. Um, So I liked that they continued on using that lore of the spirit gods and, you know, keeping them happy and your karma at camp and everything. And um, that was kind of a callback from the first movie where Torrance is scared uh, that because she dropped the spirit stick, she's cursed. And uh, then they go through and they break the curse. And then um, I liked the curse montage because they lose the spirit stick, so then they're cursed and all the bad things happen to them. Yes. And, and there's this funny like... montage of them like falling down, they can't get cell phone reception, their Polaroids don't develop, they develop leukemia. No, none of those things happen. Didn't it? No, none of those things happen. Well, some things like that happen. They fall down. Yeah, that's the that's what I meant. <laughs> and they can't do their stunts. Mm-hmm. Um they have a really bad practice, and then everyone gets injured. Or... And that one child falls down a well. Nobody falls down a well. Really? Pretty sure. We'll have to watch it again. Okay, sounds good. We're going to go watch it again. <laughs> oh, and that bear mauling. No, there was no bear mauling. I think that was a different show. Agree to disagree. <laughs> okay, well, if you saw the bear mauling, let us know. <laughs> Were there any other parts of the movie that you liked? Yeah, the curse montage was great, but I think the best part of the whole movie... Cheer Rumble. Cheer Rumble. So this is the one time they really lean into their Sam snapping and bouncing. And I think she's trying to do like a West Side Story thing. But again, she looks like she's jumping rope in a different way. (laughs) 
Um, so this is the one part where they really lean into the West Side Story thing. They're on kind of like almost a movie set at Universal Studios. And it's like a back alley sort of thing. And they come out like snapping. And they're, yeah, she's doing it again. <laughs> and they said, we're going to get yeah. into a cheer rumble. And I think that was maybe my favorite choreography of the whole movie, I too. I think so. I think I don't know cheer as well, but they get into more just like dance choreography. It at was that a point. good theme. Um, like sometimes uh, routines will have a theme. Mm-hmm. So there's been like race car themes and there's been. Wait, there's race car themes? Yeah. You did a race car theme cheer? I didn't. I didn't. What would that entail? Uh, I'll show you the video after. Well, we get to explain it to so our... So the uniforms looked a little bit like NASCAR uniforms. And so they're then... just like Pennzoil and all full of ads all yeah. the time. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the boys looked like they were wearing um, like mechanic onesies. What are they called? Coveralls. Oh, like Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah. I get how it could do that in the costuming, but what would they do to so make a race car? they actually created a car by doing, like, lifts and tumbling and stuff. All right. And, um, and then they ended, well, they were waving the, like, the checkered flag. Mm-hmm. All the girls pulled those out of their uniforms, and they had checkered flags. And then okay. at the beginning of the routine, I think they had, like, uh, red, yellow, green flags. And then they waved the green flag and they started the routine. Huh. It was pretty cool. You should do some themed cheers. I'll, I'll come up with some good ones for you. Okay. okay. Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> no. Nope. Not specifically that movie, but just a uh, the idea of giving birth to the Antichrist. Nope. Not a good cheer. All right. uh, French Revolution. You could have like some people, they start off small and then there's one person who's like at the head and then they get bigger and then they come and they cut her head off. <laughs> no. No? There's a Top Gun themed routine this year. Huh. I haven't seen it yet. But they have little um like little flight suits mm-hmm. and they're they're really cute. And there's lots of real sexy volleyball being played. Is there sexy volleyball in Top yeah, Gun? Yeah, they're super homoerotic volleyball. I haven't seen Top Gun. Oh, it's pretty sexy. You get a young Val Kilmer and a young Tom Cruise. Woo. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um there was a school themed cheer one year aren't they all school themed no like they you used to shout your school's name quite often <laughs> no this is an all-star team so they weren't affiliated to their school so it's more like sitting down doing math finding somewhere to sit at lunch that kind of stuff yeah yeah that doesn't sound great <laughs> no it was very stereotypical school so they had these little pleated skirts and all the girls had big pigtails oh like school girl yeah and mm, the that... boys looked like they were wearing little school uniforms and their uniforms had backpacks attached to them it was really cute nobody gets shot Nobody gets shot. That's good. <laughs> Why would they shot? We're part of the culture these days. Sad to say. Okay, yeah, you're right. It wasn't a narrative on school shootings. Well, I think they should, like, you know, get a little more edgy, do some commentary on things like mm. that. I'll uh, see what comes out this year. You should do yours about China and Hong Kong, about them losing their autonomy. I'll, I'll pitch it for 2020, 2021. Yes. Okay. Back to, uh, what movie are we doing? Mac and Me? <laughs> so when he's going down that hill no, in the wheelchair it, and all whoa, whoa, the dogs whoa. come out. Stop. We're talking about Bring It On, In It to Win It. Oh, Mac and Me's better though. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the cheer rumble, I think, was maybe my favorite part of the whole movie. Yes, and this was one of those moments where they were actually doing hard stunts and like tumbling and everything. And it was really great to look at as well as like from a cheerleading standpoint, you could tell that they were actually doing hard stuff and that you could actually fall out of. I feel like from the limited amount of cheerleading that I've seen, these cheer movies are much closer to the reality of the sport than most sports. Yes. Like if you watch a hockey movie, if you watch like Mighty Ducks, I know like I don't expect it to be like how the game is, but the rules aren't even the same. They just kind of make things up as they go because yeah. they're like, well, that doesn't matter. That's not what it's about. But it seems like with the Bring It On series, if nothing else, they take the cheerleading seriously. Yes. The cheerleading but the thing is, is they definitely... take nothing else seriously. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's why I enjoyed it is because like the cheerleading is very real to life and I can mm-hmm. appreciate what they're doing and that it shows like a certain level of, of athleticism. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that is what i liked the best about it yeah it's always strange to me because people have asked like oh don't you love this movie it has lots of hockey and it's like yeah "Yeah, but just because it has something i like doesn't mean i like the movie it still can be a good or bad movie true i think the best sports movies tend to be boxing and baseball i don't really care for those sports too much but 
it's a good movie which bring it on for here we go again is not a great movie here we go again <laughs> is that one <laughs> no it's too close to bring it on to bring it on again oh right Remember there's one point where there's this other team, the Flamingos. That the Flaming Hose? Cons- <laughs> the <laughs> Flaming Hose, yes. They're really concerned about, so they're like, ah, oh, we're going to go do surveillance on them. And then they put on costumes and go around the resort for no reason because they're not there. They know where they are. Yeah. And then they eventually get to the place. They do big lifts so they can crawl out like a skylight. But then other people just walk in. So that also didn't make any sense. But what to what end did they do that? They so- go there and they see them. They're like, Oh, yep, they're good. They sent us video to show us that they're good. And now we look at them and that video was correct. I think they wanted to spy on their routine and see what they had so that they could like mimic it or do better in their routine. How would does that help you? In well, a sport where you're essentially competing against yourself, it's scored. Yeah. Seeing what they do doesn't affect you in any way. Because it's not like you'd go, oh, they're bad. So now I won't try as hard. Oh, they're good. Now I'll try harder. Just try as hard as you can. <laughs> I think you should come give my team a pep talk. I will. Just try as hard as you can. I'm going to bring up a lot of political stuff in it. <laughs> no. I'm going to talk about Hong Kong a lot. No. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Never mind. You're never doing a team talk. It was a great nation that's losing its autonomy. It matters, Samantha. And they'd be like, why are we talking about this at cheer practice? And I'll be like, why aren't you talking about this at your practice? (laughs) I'll be like, never mind. Anyway, (laughs) moving on to stunting. (laughs) Should we get into the big finale? Yes. So now we have these two teams, the East Coast Jets and the West Coast Sharks, and they've come together and they've formed a team with a great name of... Shets. The Shets. Well, that's real bad. Well, at one it point, was either that or sharts. <laughs> well, one person says, how about the East-West spirit? And everyone's like, no, that's dumb. That's way better. That's a way better name. Yeah. That's like a name that you'd actually probably name a gym. Yeah. Okay, so the Shats. Yes. They have to go against the, the Prairie Dogs, who are my favorite team. They're your favorite team? Yeah. And the flamingos. The prairie dogs. Also, at one point, Sarah rips the underwear off of one of the prairie dogs. And, like, that's just a joke. What? When did that happen? Remember in the big strip poker sequence? Oh, yeah, that's right. I and then that. they rob them, but not of money, of their clothing. They forcibly take all their clothes off. <laughs> Even though they're just in their hotel suite still. Yeah. So I'm sure they have more clothing. And then they have a dance party wearing the other team's clothing? Yes. That happens at cheer camp. Again, I'm not a a veteran of the cheer circuit. You have been to a cheer competition. Though. I have. So in most cheer competitions, they do allow chain link fences and rakes in there, right? <laughs> no. Because in after seeing the flamingos, who were very impressive, yes, someone who doesn't good. know anything about cheerleading will look at that and go like, wow, that's amazing what they're mm-hmm. doing. And they should win. You would think, because that was a great performance. Except for that ending pose. Oh, yeah, they make flamingo poses. But they just look floppy and weird. Yeah, there's a, it's on brand, though. But then the Shets come out, and they bring out a chain link fence that they, like, jump out of, and they have, like, rakes attached to it because they're straight now. Yeah. Because it's a West Side Story Because it's a West Side Story thing. themed routine. Mm-hmm. But it's... only the first 10 seconds are. Yeah. This probably didn't even phase you, but it hurt me a little bit to watch them rip up uniforms and, like, remake them. Yeah, and they looked terrible. Yeah. They used to have nice uniforms. Do you know how much a cheerleading uniform costs? I do. You've told me many times. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And you should never, ever rip up your cheer uniform. Yeah. Yeah, you're listening out there. You little punks. You people <laughs> on Sam's team. Oh, I hope your team listens to this one. Um, Kira does. And Hi, Kira. <laughs> they're going to be like, what's happening in Hong Kong and why does it matter? And then they'll look into it, get informed. Yeah. I think Kira is the only one who listens. So well, shout maybe out to Kira. This one is a cheer-based one. Maybe more of them will. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I should do all the terrible, terrible, dirty cheers that I always make up. No, do not. <laughs> Kira doesn't need to hear that. <laughs> But not dirty in the way you would think. No. (laughs) So the Flamingos were robbed. They should have won. Yes. They were much better. The Flamingos were really good. The Prairie Dogs were quite good as well. Mm -hmm. I think they did a very clean, good-looking routine. 
I was excited for for half a second. I thought this movie might do something surprising because they announced a third place in Spirit Dogs. They announced a second place and it's a Flamingos. And I was hoping they would announce first place and it'd be a team we just never saw. And then like everyone would the be like, oh yeah, I guess. The Shets came in fourth. <laughs> and the Shets were like sixth place. And they're yeah. like, well, yeah, we really only started this routine four days ago. So True. True. what were we expecting? <laughs> and that would have been great. But no, they win and then they get to go travel the world and um, make out in front of landmarks. They go on a green screen tour of the world. And they're all in postcards, which yes. I liked. I liked that. Yeah, the ending was kind of funny, actually. They do a big singing, dancing thing, which I guess they do in the end of all the movies. Yes, that's a theme. This time was at least in character. It wasn't the actors doing it. Oh, yeah. The first Bring It On, it was kind of like a blooper reel. Like, they were just kind of playing around. And then um, this one, they were still their cheerleader selves. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of neat. But as much as they show us around the world what this movie really is more than anything, more than a bunch of cheer sequences, more than stereotypical characters. It's and a story about tr true love. No, it's a com <laughs> full-length commercial for Universal Studios. It really is. That's what this is. I assume it's produced by Universal. It and must be. And they agreed to give all this money if they just show off all of the things that they have there. Because now I'm sure so many people, cheerleaders especially, would look at this and be like, I want to go to one of the camps or one of the competitions there because yeah. I'll see all these places. They really highlight a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. There's shots of the roller coaster cut into the cheer sequences. <laughs> yes. They really show you the Hard Rock Cafe. They show you the restaurants. They show you these diners and the different rides. And that's what this movie is about more than anything, I think. Yeah. You should write a cheerleading movie. I would love to write a cheerleading movie. Bring it hey, on, uh, eight. People out there, um, Universal, whoever has this Universal. Now, hire us. Sam knows the cheer. I know, what do I know? Movie, Plot structure. Movie writing. Yes. <laughs> Although if you've seen the movies I've written, you'd be like, yeah, do you though? <laughs> but I know, I know funny sometimes. I if know I'm... funny sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's what's going to be on my business card. I know funny sometimes. <laughs> and we will write you the next Bring It On. Bring It On number eight. Bring it on eight. We really mean it this time. Where the wind blows. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a drama. Yeah. A cheer drama. A cheer drama. That'd be good. We could really explore the tensions in I think I'd like to Hong do it. Kong and Russia. <laughs> Is that who we were talking about? Well, there's there's a lot going on in Russia we could also talk True. about. But um, I think it happens after the cheer apocalypse in a post-cheer apocalyptic world. What happens in the cheer apocalypse? You know, everyone's fighting over gas or water. And so all the cheerleaders now are wearing like a mishmash of leather and football uniforms, like in the Mad Max stuff. Oh, yeah. We just go there. Just like in um, the Mad Max world, the first movie is just like a movie about a cop in Australia. Oh. And then somewhere between one and two, the apocalypse happens. <laughs> so I say we do that for What about Bring if it it's a world where cheerleading is banned? Oh, well, exactly. There's underground cheer teams, like Fight yep. Club. Yes. But it's like underground cheerleading, and that's how they like still keep the sport alive. That's exactly what I was thinking. So it's after the apocalypse, and everyone's like, no, we don't have, we don't have time for cheerleading. We're looking for water. So their parents don't want them cheering. Yeah, there's the... I like this. This... Thunderdome, where they go and have cheer offs. Yeah, instead of like dog races. <laughs> dog races? <laughs> yeah, isn't that something that happens in Thunderdomes? Dog fighting? Dog fighting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheer off. Yeah. But underground cheer off. And there's like bookies and betting, and mm -hmm. like the really good teams are sponsored by rich old men. Yeah. And they like have fancy uniforms. I like this. This is a good this movie. This is a good movie. We're going to we're gonna have to roll with this and see what happens. Yeah. Bring I, it on eight, the Cheerpocalypse. Oh, yeah. Into the Cheerpocalypse. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good one. And then at the end, like, a uh, cheer savior emerges, and then that goes into part nine, uh, Rise of the Cheer Savior? Cheer Queen? Cheer Something. Queen? I like that. We'll figure it out. Spirit Captain. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, we'll work on it. We have yeah. to write the eighth one first. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for joining us through this meandering look at Bring It On for Let's Get Cheering. What's it? Also it? known as Bring It On, In It to Win It. In It to Win It. <laughs> uh, yeah, check it out. It's 
fun at times. It is very painful at times. I feel like you could do a really good drinking game to this movie. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear something that you go like, what? Then you take a drink. Anytime there's some really uncomfortable innuendo, take a drink. Anytime someone tries to say something sincere, but it sounds funnier than when they're joking, you take a drink. (laughs) You take a drink. Um, Anytime you see the book Art of War, you have to finish your drink. Yeah. So how many times do you think Sun Tzu's The Art of War plays in this cheerleading movie? Mm. If you guessed any fewer than seven, you'd be wrong because it is very prominent. It is very prominent. (laughs) Well, uh, help us write our Bring It On sequel. You can uh, tweet. Email, all of that sort of or stuff. Or if you want to star in our Bring It On sequel. Oh, I know some people. I oh, actually, you probably know. I know you know the people. cheer people. Yeah. And then I know the actors, so they can have all the lines and actually do two stunts, and then you know all the people who will be doing the actual. And work. I can teach actors to stunt. Okay, I don't know if that's covered by our insurance. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and then yeah, I'll bring in the actual cheer team, and then we'll have a, a full motion picture budget. Yeah. Perfect. For the cheer apocalypse. For the cheer apocalypse. Okay, well, you can contact us if you would like to be in or help us write Bring It On 8 into the cheer apocalypse. Um, you can email us at I love this, you should, and the number cheer two. Cheer apocalypse now? Cheer apocalypse now. Yeah, I like that. But now with like an exclamation point. Cheer apocalypse. Ellipses. Now! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You can email us at I love this, you should, and the number two at gmail.com. You can tweet or Instagram us at I L T Y S and the number two. And you can find us on Facebook at I love this, you should, two dash podcast. And you can let us know all of your ingenious ideas. And if I can do one little shout out at the end, I have this very cool I love this, you should, two. It's like a pencil holder, and it has a little sliding thing that you can do. The verdict is, yep, or nope. I'm going to slide it to, mm, you know what? I'm sliding it to yep. Really? Yeah. It's, oh. it's really bad at lots of points, but the funny stuff's funny, and uh, it's over quickly. Nice. <laughs> it's over quickly. And so, yeah, thanks to Maria for making this. That's pretty cool. And it has a metric time converter on it, too, because... I don't know if it ever comes up on this podcast, but I work in metric time. I do not. Yeah. Makes our relationship very strange. So right now it's about um, 770. (laughs) Metric time? Yeah. Okay. So we will see you next week. We'll see you next time. I am going to think of a movie to show because I had all these great ones lined up and then I realized a lot of the movies I wanted to talk about, I don't think most people have access to them. We're trying to keep them easily accessible so that you can either rent them from the library or stream them somewhere. Although you're picking direct-to-video ones, so I feel like if I do like 90s Hong Kong movies... They're as easy to find as the Bring It Ons. Well, you can get all the Bring It Ons at the library. At our library. At the Edmonton Public Library. Shout Check out, it out. It's in a book. Shout out to EVL. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a shout out to my cousin Jasmine, who is currently running. Oh, Keep shout going, out Jazz. And shout out to all of you. You. You especially. Right now, that one, and when you're going, who, me? Does he mean me? Yeah, I mean you. Yeah, you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Especially to you. <laughs>